Hello and welcome to Oxygen Not Included. Or perhaps welcome back. I played this game last uh, last year as it or just as it was getting ready to come out, I started a new game. Uh, moments or a week, maybe two weeks before when they released the ability to choose different worlds. And I played this game on Twitch, so uh, unless you watched some old archives here on YouTube or you've been following me on Twitch, for that long, uh, you probably missed me playing this the first time. So in the last time I played this, it was just a Terra world, which is the default uh, the default planet type. And uh, they added, I don't know, eight or ten or something new worlds, new world types, which all have their own biomes. And uh, I played a, off camera a uh, Oceania 1, and which is an ocean, largely. It's a, a lot of salt water. Um, and a lot of uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of salt water. And um, then I and then I quit playing this last November, I think it was. And again, about a week or two later, they released uh, Meep's Man mandatory recreation pack, which was a, a group of sort of uh, in enhancements to the way that the uh, dupes uh, enjoy enjoy their time off and including a bunch of new buildings and things like that that I didn't get to feature in that Twitch series. Uh, they added a, a lot of changes since then as well, uh, mostly like bug fixes and small changes. Hopefully I don't run up against any that I don't know about. And then they released Bonnie's Automation Innovation Pack, and that was back in March. So there, it was about four months, I guess, between between the two, or three three months, something like that, between the two. And uh, that added a bunch of new automation features, which I will, of course, like to take take a look at. And it included a new um, a new sort of uh, sweeper, automatic automated sweeper, sort of like a Roomba that zips around and sweeps your factory. As you can see, there's one actually zipping around and sweeping the factory here intermittently. Uh, so they in introduced that and it adds a few um, a few other automation oriented things. So we're gonna take definitely take a look at those once we get to doing automation. Uh, for this series, I would like to play Rhyme. We'll play it in survival mode. Well, I'd like to play Rhyme. So we have, of course, Terra, which is the default world, has uh, the very common biomes that it's always had. Nothing unusual. No, um, no, no odd behaviors. Uh, Oceania is the one that I played um, off camera, but I did show a little bit of it in that streaming series as I progressed through it. It, as I said, has a lot of saltwater biomes. And it has a lot of, um, and it, it allows for these alternate, uh, as the rest of these planet types do, allows for these alternate types of uh, effects to the world. Uh, and then there is Verdante, which is the uh, green, lush world. Um, I considered playing that one this time, but I like the look of Rhyme, which is cold. I like the thought of it, I should say. Um, so, so heat is going to be an issue, but not in the usual way, because we actually need to make more heat uh, or, or retain the heat inside the base, which is not something you normally want to do. Um, you want to instead, um, you want to instead, re normally in most worlds, you want to vent the heat and get rid of it, but in Rhyme, you actually need to retain the heat and manage it well. And uh, water is also a bit more of a challenge because it's all frozen. There's, it's all ice. So we need to also manage dealing with the ice and melting the ice with the heat that we're producing to try and make, uh, to try and liquefy it into water. And then it could be polluted or it could be whatever. So we have to deal with that. Some of the other world types is, is our Arborea, which is uh, also a, a green world, but it's more tree based as opposed to um, plant based and as you can see here it, it lacks um, metals for, largely speaking uh, and then there's Volcania which is very hot and volcanic 
Uh, the Badlands, which is which is very sparse. There's Iridio, which is a desert, which is very very hard. And then there's probably the hardest world there is, which is Oasis. -y. Oasis. -y? I'm not sure how to pronounce it actually. And it is a also kind of it's kind of a combination of the Badlands combined with the uh, Iridio, the desert. Um, yeah, the Badlands plus Iridio kind of makes Oasis. -y. And it's, it's also going to be a very challenging world to do. So I've gone kind of, you know, a few in here. So this one's ideal, and then it's probable survival chance, and then there's likely for twice, and then moderate for twice, and then marginal, and then two slims. So I've gone kind of one step below what I've played before, below meaning harder. And I, I've i picked out a, a coordinate. Uh, the coordinates are a combination of a seed and a... A, uh, what did I do? I, lo I lost it. Hold on a second, sorry. There it is. Uh, a coordinates of a seed, or, or a seed, a, a random seed, as well as the configuration of some of the different um, special features that make up the game here. So uh, this one is, this one contains geodes, which are, which are caches of rare materials. Uh, diamond especially, is which is very useful for building transparent tiles uh, metal rich so we have, we have a bit more metal ore than normal on this one which uh, as we'll see in a bit there's we don't have an iron volcano so having a little bit more iron is going to be is going to be nice um, by the way I found this seed on tools not included .net, the map browser there so you can uh, you can also pull this seed up and see it as well if you would like I'm not going to be very cheaty and look at where everything is on the map but I do know the the consistency of the number of geysers um, and uh, and kind of the overall I mean the overall layout of rhyme uh, or configuration of rhyme it does have a frozen core I considered not doing a frozen core and I actually had a map seed all picked out a coordinate rather all picked out without a frozen core but I thought, well, since we're playing on a frozen planet, having a frozen core kind of makes some logical sense. So I did I did do the frozen core, and then I did geoactive, which means it has more geysers and vents than usual, because I like geysers and vents and volcanoes. Uh, volcanoes including the metal volcanoes, by the way. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I forgot. I want to also show you that I've, um, I've installed some mods as well. Um, the blueprint mod, and by the way, the last series I played, I didn't include any mods. I wanted to play that one full vanilla, but I found some, some mods that I like. I'm still browsing through the mods collection, so I'm still willing to add more if I find them. But um, for now, if, if you have mods to suggest, by all means, uh, suggest them in the comments. But for now, I'm going to start with these uh, blueprints because once I start building stuff, if I want to make another one, I want to just be able to blueprint it and not... Uh, not have to build it all from scratch each time. Things like the self-powered oxygen rooms and things like that are going to be really necessary to have a blueprint, I feel. Uh, deconstructible POI props. I don't want the POI stuff to, to inhibit my building. I won't deconstruct at will, but if there's something in the way of where I want to build, I'm going to deconstruct it. Uh, the geyser calculated average output tooltip kind of gives us an idea of what actually this geyser is going to output. does the math for me. I could do the math, but I'm lazy, and I uh, and this gives us the ability to quickly look at it instead of having to write them down or remember them or whatever. Half door was an interesting one that I saw. It's good for uh, ladders, uh, so you can have a, a door horizontally across a vertical ladder shaft, and only have a half door instead of have the the double block door is only a single block. So that way they can go up through the ladder, up through the door, and you don't have to have a two block door. You can just, just have a horizontally. You can have a one block door. Uh, gas overlay changes the oxygen overlay to be a gas overlay instead, I think, or maybe it adds a second overlay. I'm not positive. We'll take a look at that in a bit. But uh, telling us what types of gases there are is much better to me than telling me whether I can breathe it or not. Uh, so it uses the color overlays of the different gases like they appear in, in, uh, in different areas using that overlay color. Uh, I think it uses the overlay color actually that they use in the material overlay. Uh, falling sand. This auto marks falling sand, snow, and other loose items to deconstruct or to, to dig. And I feel that 
that's one of the places where your your uh, dupes die the most often is by getting themselves trapped behind some falling sand or snow. So I'm going to help them by letting them shovel it out automatically without me having to pay attention. Mod Manager is a recommended mod if you're using mods so that you can, because uh, the Steam Workshop sometimes caches and doesn't always show the mods when they're updated. So I have that installed just so that I can check the mods every recording or three and make sure that they're up to date. Uh, wounded automatically go to the med beds so you don't have to assign them which is useful because they'll get attacked by something or they'll you know, they'll take some damage somehow or other in space or something once we get there and uh, that way they can go and get healed up and not be aching and walking slow and trying to do work and then show building ranges was also an interesting mod to me so when you're building something it shows what tiles are affected by that building or uh, need to be clear for that building to work properly or anything like that. Some of the buildings already show, things like the auto miners and stuff already show, but I wanted this for things like, once we get into space, especially the telescope and the space scanners, so that it shows where I need to leave clearance to make sure that we get everything uh, working properly. So let's close out of that. All those are enabled automatically. Let me do the survival mode again and paste that down. Uh, the game settings are just a detail of this, so it's a rhyme world. Uh, disease, morale, hunger, and stress are all on default. The, um, I think the no sweat is one setting, uh, one setting to the left, so it's like fasting, chipper, chill, and germ resistant. So it's not really that much easier, so I'm gonna uh, save it. I do want, or leave it at default, I should say. I want to do care packages so that when we don't want a duplicate at the printer, we can get something else, possibly, whatever that is. Uh, stress reactions. Hopefully, they never hit on our percent stress, but if they do, then they will start destroying the base or peeing on the base or crying or whatever it is that they, their stress reaction is, which we will take a look at very soon. Sandbox mode is off. However, debug mode is on. Uh, debug mode is a special mode that you can turn on using a, a uh, specially named text file in the game install directory. And that's on only so that I can use the fast forward, the debug fast forward, if we want to get something built quickly in an episode so that we're not... So the choice is use that, have me pause and come back repeatedly um, whenever I'm whenever something is building that we want to skip time or use fast forward or sit through it and wait for it or cut the episode and then come back in the next episode with it finished. Um, I'm not sure what fast workers mode is, probably something kind of related to that where they, they, they do some tasks faster, but I'm going to leave that unchecked. So I, I have the debug mode on, but I'm only going to use it pretty much for the, um, for the fast speed. I'm not going to use any of the real cheaty stuff like, uh, teleportation and stuff like that so that's the uh that's the world we're going to choose and then we need to choose our starting three duplicates infusing oxygen too much oxygen removing ideal oxygen levels achieved i i, I think i think it was the sims that started that whole cop concept but everybody's taken over now Okay, so to start with, what I like to have is a builder, a digger, and a researcher. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, researcher. So we're going to re-roll those to get the right builder that we want, the right digger that we want, and the right researcher that we want. Uh, we don't really need farming this early on, so I'd rather, if I'm going to choose, like... Well, this one's a loud sleeper, so I won't, probably won't choose this person. But if I'm going to choose someone like this... I'm going to want them to have the plus seven of the single thing or maybe like three digging and three uh, construction or three or three construction and three digging or three construction and three maybe cooking would be okay to do kind of as a secondary for one of them. So let's do some re-rolls. I definitely want at least three construction. Uh, Diver's Lungs is a good one. Narcoleptic is fine. So this might be our uh, builder here. Let's re-roll our digger, excavation, increase machinery. That's not a bad deal for later. Cannot do cooking errands. That's okay. Let's pause here for a second and go over to the researcher. I don't want the loud sleeper because they're all going to be sharing a room for the while, for quite a while. So for as long as they're sharing rooms, I want to um, not have a loud sleeper. So let's skip that. Decreased athletics would be okay for a... 
for the for the scientists, especially if they're also cooking and stuff, they don't need to be able to run that fast because uh, they're not going to be leaving the base. This 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 person here might just be our um, our internal like our our builder or our scientist and cook person to start with. So that's actually not a bad uh, not a bad set to start with. This one's stress reacts as a vomiter, this one's a binge eater, and this one's an ugly crier. Hopefully we never get to see those. Uh, when, when this person's overjoyed, they uh, they leave they leave a trail of happy sparkles. This one hands out balloons when they're overjoyed, and this one re redecorates a room with stickers when they're overjoyed. Fun stuff. So, I do also have a image. Let me see if I can find it quickly. I should have pulled it up before I started. Of the um, the the different dupes, uh, I'm not pulling it up on on the screen. I'm not sharing it. I'm just pulling it up just because there are some. It's a little hard to tell what the gender of these the duplicates are. And from this point, you can't tell from their traits either. Well, this one says Lindsay is a woman, so that's easy. But sometimes it's a little hard to tell whether they're male, female, or gender X. So I'm going to use this this sort of image here to try and identify which which ones we have and uh, what their gender is, and then we're going to actually name these these duplicates after uh, people who are supporters of the channel and people who are supporters of of my efforts in in developing this. So uh, we're going to start here with Harold. Harold is most certainly a um, a male uh, gender, so I will name Harold Future Boy. And then Gossman is, I think, yeah, is is female. So we're gonna name Gossman as Catherine. And I'm I'm choosing uh, female names and male names for the male and female. The gender X ones I'll probably do either, but. Um, if you have a preference, by all means, let me know if you're a supporter. And even if you're not a supporter, let me know in the comments if you'd like a character named after you in the future, a duplicate. And I will uh, certainly name uh, a character after you when I get through the list of supporters. And then this one is going to be one of my uh, one of my co-op partners, Alnalana. So. The other thing we need to do on the screen is to name the colony. I usually like to take one of the randomly generated names, but I don't know which one I will do. I usually one of them will just strike me as kind of funny, and I'll usually pick that one. I've done a space junk before. Grimy ant farm kind of sounds fun. Viral system. Golden train wreck. That one's a good one. Let's go with golden train wreck. Hopefully it's not a train wreck, but you never know. Okay, so we're gonna embark on the uh, onto the onto the planet here. Alert! I have awoken at a target location, but the colonization efforts already have already hit a hitch. I was supposed to land on the planet's surface, but became trapped many miles underground instead. Although the conditions are not ideal, it's imperative that I establish a colony here and begin mounting efforts to escape. Begin. So first we start out, let me pause for quickly here. Uh, we start out here in the center of, we don't know really what. Uh, there are three duplicates are here, Catherine, Future Boy, and Alnilana. And once we give them tasks to start working, they will actually start digging, start building, and then eventually start cooking. I, um, the, the sort of early, early game piece is very simple to do uh you basically you just kind of start digging out in either direction we have a little bit of water here we have more water down here which is good uh as you can see this biome is pretty warm let me actually get the heat the heat thing up here right around the uh the printing pod itself we're right about 21 22 degrees here but once we get out another little bit we cool off immediately down to like 15 degrees and then it keeps dropping down to around 13 degrees and then once we get out past this very, very pale green sort of circle here, which is kind of the starting block of the biome, we drop below freezing. So 
we have to be very careful about how we build and how we expand and everything in in the um in in a rhyme world let's unpause i'm going to put it up to medium speed oopsie i've already fat fingered keys and i'm going to start let them start digging uh, this is all just sandstone there's some uh, dirt here and some algae here these this is oxalite here this this emits oxygen at a slow rate so that we can see or so that we can uh output so we can have breathable oxygen it all puts breathable oxygen for us so as you can see everyone has started digging uh, we can change the priorities here eventually maybe i should kick catherine up to full building uh, future way up to full digging and on the line up to full researching that didn't automatically deal with that sand that falling sand interesting i'm going to keep digging this way it's going to make that sand fall i'm surprised it maybe because it didn't block them off it didn't um i want to enable the proximity so that they do close closer tasks first otherwise they'll run across the map we don't want that to happen Maybe it only deletes the ones, either that or the mod doesn't work. Maybe it only deletes the ones that are actually impeding their progress or, or causing them to be stuck. So that should be a good start for digging. Uh, we don't want to dig too much because then you end up with uh, a mess to, to work with. So the first few things we need are, of course, some storage bins. And I don't need to watch a video about digging for resources. As you can see, it's telling us we need an oxygen generator and an outhouse. Oxygen generation is going to come in a little bit, but the outhouses can actually come sometime soon. Where's the edge of that? Oh, we've already passed the edge of the cold biome. Oops. Let's do... Uh, for now, we'll do all. And we'll copy and paste the settings onto the other ones, and they can all start sweeping things up as well. Uh, let's do some outhouses out here. And then uh, Future Boy should go and build those. Or Catherine? Catherine's our builder? Yeah, Catherine's our builder. And then the other thing we need very soon is a pitcher pump. And what that does is that allows you to pump up the water from this pool of water and use it in things. Oh, we do have the ability to build an oxygen diffuser now. Oh, we must have gotten something that we needed. Ah, copper ore. Yeah, you need metal ore in order to build some things. Uh, let's see, stations, we're going to need the research station, but we need some more metal ore, so we'll have to, I guess we'll have to continue mining out that copper for now. We need to go up and down, of course, but for now we can uh, dig that out. I just don't want to break into this caustic biome just yet, so we'll hit, hit right up against that granite and igneous, and then we won't go any further for now. And then the other things we can use very soon are beds before we hit the end of the first cycle, although they're going to hit it too soon to build the bed. So I'll just wait on that. Uh, we'll need the microbe musher very soon, and then we'll also need some power very soon. Let's go ahead and have them set up a research station. I'm going to put it over here, I think, by the kind of near the water, because they use water for doing the research. And then we need to have a manual generator. Actually, no, I'm going to put the manual generator first. Our yeah, they're, now there's their time off, so they're going to eat. We do have a little bit of nutrient bars. It gave us 20 kilograms of nutrient bars. And so they're going to eat those, and they're going to use the bathroom and things like that. And then they will be uh, ready to work again in the morning. Uh, we need to build some sandstone tiles underneath these things here, just so that they have a floor. And I use the B key, which is the sort of picker tool. And it builds whatever thing you have your mouse click or you have selected it makes a copy of it to build it it actually the mods don't appear to be enabled because i don't have the blueprint thing down here okay i will figure that out unless it's unlocked sometime later in the uh in the technology i'll figure the mod thing out for the next episode they've already or, uh the oxalate's already been cons almost completely consumed here. There's another piece there. And there'll be a few more scattered around, like up here. Um, but there's not much, so we'll need to have oxygen generation before too long. So as you can see, they move kind of slow right now. Um, but as they kind of get get stronger and get better, they'll actually start um, 
they'll actually start moving faster. That athletic skill will go up. Yeah, we require a food source. We still need oxygen generation. Yep. We know. We know. The other thing we need to do with power is connect power with wires. I like to run the wires down through wall and floor tiles because if it's behind a tile, it doesn't affect their happiness with the decor. Uh, let's see, decor overlay. I'll remember these shortcuts eventually. That's F8. Uh, but eventually, uh, the, the stuff behind the tiles won't affect their decor, but the stuff above the tiles will, or outside the tiles will. So I want the as much of the wire as possible to be hidden behind walls and floors. Because wire is ugly, according to the duplicates at least. And it's very likely that I'm going to probably... Oh, there's some more oxalate over there. Nice. Uh, expand into the caustic biomes a bit. Because they're, or this one at least, whatever the biome this is, aluminum ore. Um, because this is, the dirt biome is pretty small. Um, it's probably like 8 or 10 sort of blocks or chunks. Uh, chunk being that... that pale green section there that looks like a kind of diamond shape. That's a hatch that's there bird itself in. We'll probably end up, or we most likely will end up ranching those later because they eat stuff and make coal. They make it. Yes, they make it. Okay, so Catherine's going to charge... Oh, I didn't, put a, I didn't build a battery. I need to build a battery. It goes there. And then we can put some wire in too. Catherine's going to run on that for no reason. Okay, you can probably stop. And somebody go build a battery. Catherine is tired, it looks like. Oh, we need to build... We need to build some furniture. We need to build some cots. I'll just build three cots for right now. Didn't build that one for some reason. That way they have some place to sleep because they're... Catherine's tired right now because she slept on the ground. And it's chilly also. Okay, good. So now you can charge up the battery. The manual generators charge the battery until... Or start charging the battery when it gets down to 50%. Um, but they'll, they'll run it until it's full. And then they fall off. And so then we can start some research now. And there are a lot of researches we can do. Um, we can only do the ones that only have the single science here, the single little blue science. Uh, interior decor is not something that I'll do right away, I don't think. Um, ventilation, no, not yet. Plumbing, not yet. Pharmacology, not yet. Employment, power, probably basic farming. Although the decor one's not actually a bad idea. Um, yeah, let's actually do the decor one first, I think. Because we're going to live off of mush bars for a while anyway. Speaking of which, we need to build a... I've already crowded myself in, I think. Oh, I built that down here somehow. Uh, let me put a ladder in. We can dig that up. Thank you. And then we'll build a ladder. And we can go down a bit. And we can go up a bit. And then we can do some... And I like to build my floors four high, generally. Not 100% of the time... But generally speaking, I build I build them four high, uh, and then one, two, three, four, and then I do floors. Like so. That'll give us a little bit more stuff we have access to. Oh, downtime. Felony achievement earned. So we achieved I have at least one toilet in the colony and a bed for every duplicate. Well, that was pretty easy to do. Okay, let's speed up the nighttime process here. Both the downtime. Actually, we could look at the schedule while we're at it. So the default schedule is two blocks or two, ti two time blocks, I guess, of downtime. Three of bedtime and then one of bath time. Uh... While they will use the bathroom if they need to any other time, they mostly will do it during downtime and bath time. 
And then if there's showers available, which we'll, we'll get later, uh, they'll, they'll shower here as well. Uh, and then if, if the person, if the duplicant is a, a early riser, I think is what it's called, then they get more work benefit here. And if they're a night owl, they get more work benefit here. So I'll eventually be creating additional schedules here to enable them to be able to build, uh, or to be able to, to take advantage of those early riser, pull it back down again, and night owl, um, early bird maybe, I think it's early bird, and night owl uh, traits that they have. So one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to dig out kind of a, a area down below. Actually, let's cancel that build because we're going to want to keep putting the ladder down. This may not be the permanent location for the ladder, but uh, it's it's a location for now and it can be moved easily enough later on. So we finished that decor and I definitely want to do basic farming now. Uh, so we'll get that started. Uh, science is done using... Oh, it's using dirt. I thought they used water too. They might use water as well. But either way, we need to, we need to have water for them, so... Lana's doing science on dirt. Oh, maybe the water is used in the second tier machine. Not in this one. That could be. So this isn't also, this isn't the permanent location for the water uh, supply. This might become it, or something down here might become it. But, uh, and then we have some up here as well as some ice that we'll need to melt because it's just below freezing. Actually, the water is as well, but uh, liquids don't change state for at least two degrees after their, uh, after their state change. So water changes state at minus... 0.6, but or freezes at minus 0.6, but it doesn't actually turn into ice until minus 2.6. Kind of at least, it's a little bit vague, and I don't know why this is still liquid water at minus 3 plus, but that's the way that it works. Um, we're also going to have to put some ventilation in between or next to the ladder shaft to keep airflow moving, but for now, uh, we don't really need it. And I always do at least two bathrooms because once they get used 12 times or so, I don't know what the, maybe it's 15 times. Once they get used so many times, then they have to be cleaned. And uh, that's a nasty job, but somebody's got to do it. At least until we get regular toilets. But that requires plumbing and it requires a st stable supply of water. So that's going to be a little bit. Okay, so we have, uh, there's a muck root here that's buried. We can, we can dig that up. Uh, muck roots are nice because uh, they're additional food. Oh, we get a duplicate already. I definitely want to take advantage of getting this duplicate if we can. Uh, if we can find one that we like. So we have a, a cook and a digger here. That wouldn't be a bad deal, but they have irritable bowel, so I'm not really that thrilled with it. Uh, farming, we are, we're not quite ready for farming, I don't think. Although, person's also a mouth breather. Um, excavation and strength wouldn't be a bad idea. And we're getting all the uh, the female uh, genders for some reason are the uh, are the ones that I that I'm taking the most here. Yeah, actually, well. The problem is this person's interior decorator. So while they get the increased creativity and speed related to that, they also get a decor morale bon uh, bonus or reduction, not really a bonus. So maybe I'll pass on these and wait three more cycles to take another. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of picky, I suppose, but maybe I will take, I will wait and I will take another uh Wait till the next cycle comes through. We're doing okay now as it is. And... Well, this is just bathroom use speed. Not bathroom frequency. I think I'll take this one. Still, uh, of course, one of the female gender. There are... Uh, if Unless they've added some since this uh, image that I have... There are 14, 13 female, 13 male, and 9 gender X. 
so let's let's name let's name this one. I'm trying to think here. I'll name this one Kelsey. So we need to build another bed fairly quickly. Actually, let's build it up here. Uh, because I should have been building them up here to begin with. And we just finished our research. Hopefully they will get that done. Thank you, Catherine, for finishing it. That way Kelsey will have a bed to sleep in tonight. Let's see. We have uh, meal prep, which I want fairly soon, but not right away. Um... Internal combustion. We won't need that power stuff just yet. We'll need this eventually, but maybe this one's a good idea. It helps with their morale. You can get a, a water cooler and stand around it. Uh, medicine. Hopefully we don't need any of the medicine anytime soon. We we'll want to have... Well, we don't want to have an electrolyzer anytime soon because we need to have water. Sanitation. So this is where the, the, the plumbing lavatories are and the sinks. Oh, I need a sink. That's what I need. And a shower. That's what I need the water for. Uh, plumbing, and then there's filtration, and there's gases here, which we won't need just yet either. I may even dig into more of the decor stuff, just because it'll make them happy. But we'll do them. Uh, uh, we'll do employment first. Let's go to medicine, which is kind of weird, but that's where the wash basin is. And then we can put down a wash basin for them to be able to wash their hands after they use the bathroom. Should have done that sooner, but hey, that's the way this works, I guess. So some buildings have these arrows over top of them, so you can tell them which direction of travel they need to use the, the table at or the machine at. And so when they're going to the bathroom, they don't need to wash their hands. But when they're coming from the bathroom, I want them to wash their hands. So they use it when they're traveling to the right in this case. So you can see Future Boy just went past it without using it and is doing his business, and then didn't wash his hands because there's no water in here. Oops. Uh, yeah. So that causes germs. Uh, we do have a germ overlay, and you can see Future Boy and now Lana are covered in food poisoning germs. So they'll get sick from eating food that they touch, that they use the bathroom. Uh, after they use the bathroom. Let's put some more storage bins in down here. And actually, I'm going to move these ones. I'm going to put the, the micro musher here, I think. Because I want, at least generally speaking, their... Um, dig that muckroot, or that... Uh, yeah, muck, muckroot up too. I want their food to be... Uh, I want them to spend the most amount of their time not on the bottom level. Because the bottom level is where the carbon dioxide is going to sink to. And we don't want them down there where they can't breathe. Or down there as little as possible. Okay, they left out a nutrient bar. That was nice of them. Dig, dig, build. Did they, somebody supply with water yet? No. So that's because no one has the supplying skill. Just like no one has the sweeping skill. So they'll only do stuff that they have the skills... They don't. That they don't have... Uh, priority on when they are um, when they're bored. A couple of things that I do like to change on here. Uh, I'd like to set oops, that's not what I wanted. This one. I'd like to set attacking on very high and life support on very high because they'll do those ta anyone will do those tasks when they need to be done. Uh, and these are kind of critical types of tasks. And then I like to set uh, things like researching and cooking on disallowed, except for whoever the person is that I want to do cooking, which is right now going to be Kelsey. Um, because I don't want people doing researching oh, and decorating as well. Uh, cooking or decorating who can't actually do them, because the food will turn out nasty or slow. The decorating will turn out... Let me pause this, by the way. The decorating will turn out poor, and then it won't have as high of a decor. And the researching uh, 
I don't want other people doing researching. So the rest of the stuff I'll adjust priorities as it goes, but that's kind of how I do how I do that to start with at least. Did we get skill points yet? We have one for Kelsey, right? Because Kelsey just came in. So Kelsey's going to be cooking. Kelsey loves cooking. And that's going to be because we gave her excavation cuisine. Yes. So uh, we're going to give her that skill. And that that gives her kind of a the ability to to kind of do the cooking with some priority. And also it gives her two two points to cuisine so she can do cooking better. And also she's allowed to use the electric grill. Let's take these guys out. And then let's build food microbe musher. I'll put that here. And then we need some power for that. Let's do a wire right back to there. And then someone can build that. And all they're doing is just picking up the stuff that's here and putting it in down there. I'm going to set... Let's see. Kelsey actually needs to go up all the way for cooking. Uh, let's see. Storing and supplying are kind of the miscellaneous tasks. And tidying as well. So I'm going to give maybe one each to each one. Kelsey, when you're not... Let's see. Which one's the most important? Probably supplying... So I'll put two people on supplying and one person on the other two. But that way they sweep stuff up. Yeah, we need to do mush bars now. They sweep stuff up, they put stuff away, and they supply things like the research station with dirt or the microbe musher with dirt. Yes, there's a lot of dirt. And do this one, I think. Uh, so, and also this with water. That way they do those tasks when they have time available. Okay, we did look at the research. We still need an oxygen generator. Oxygen's going to get low here very soon. Oxygen overlay. Oh, it's already getting low. So we need to have... Uh, I'm going to probably do an algae terrarium to start with. Put it over here. It's only one tile. I think it used to be two. Uh, put it over here. They'll put algae and dirt in there. And it'll produce oxygen and consume carbon dioxide. At this point in the game, I want to consume the carbon dioxide. I don't want it all to sink. So we're going to do algae terrariums for a little while. Yeah, it needs water, dirt, and algae. Uh, or maybe it's just made out of dirt. And then uh, we'll switch over the oxygen diffusers once we have a little bit more power generation going on. There could be a hatch or something buried in there. You can see the little broken marks. Or something has been buried. Could also be like a muckroot seed or something too. Oh, speaking of that, food. Uh, consumables. Meal lice, I don't want them eating. Bristle berries, I don't want them eating. Because I want to cook them. We need to set up a farm very soon. Uh, let's look at the temperature overlay here. I think it'll be okay to build a farm up here. I think. <laughs> Let's look at that uh, food planter box. I always forget what the ratio of uh, meal lice to duplicates is. They're taking some low oxygen. Yeah. Hopefully this will produce enough oxygen. I always forget what the shortcuts are. I'll remember them eventually, though. Maybe I should put another one of those in here. In there. This is, I think, the operate skill. So we don't really have somebody dedicated to operating just yet, but they'll get there eventually and uh, and start using it. Uh, we need to put all edibles in the edible container here. So meal lice, muckroot, mush bar, nutrient bars, all that stuff will go in there. Uh, we need to plant mealwood seeds, but we haven't discovered any mealwood seeds yet. Oh yes, there's some over there. 
Uh, is that all we have? Is, there's one right there. There's some down here. Maybe I should dig my way down then. Build a ladder down. I'm going to try and mark out where these go. One, two, three, four. There. Four. One, two, three, four. So there. And then we can dig into this area here. And this will also help to serve as a sink for the uh, for the carbon dioxide. It'll kind of sink down the ladder shaft a little bit. Oh. Catherine just took a narcoleptic nap. And we also have oxygen down here, which would be nice to have expanding up. Although, I think it has a rough time using a single tile shaft, so I probably should have widened this a little bit. And I could even do that on this side by deconstructing one of the beds. This, and then also digging a column here. Put these markers over one more. Cancel them. Dig a column here as well. And that'll help with the... Uh, Help with the air, let the air rise and fall a little bit easier. I think. At least it seems to work that way. So, yeah, there's still a lot of carbon dioxide. And not a lot of oxygen. I may have to put in one of the um, oxygen diffusers. Problem is, is they use a lot of water, or a lot of electricity, I should say. And that means they require somebody to be running in the generator all the time. Almost. So the algae terrariums are nice because they're passive. Or more passive. I hope I spaced these out correctly. Otherwise I'll have some fixing to do. And they're having to hold their breath down here because there's no oxygen. Until they cut into this room where the oxygen will vent out. Not, I mean, a, a good amount of oxygen is at least a thousand, and up here we have about 500. So, yeah, that's why they're having problems breathing. That's a bristle blossom, that's a mealwood. Let's dig that up, that should give us a seed. It's halted by body temperature anyway. Should it give us a seed, hopefully? Yes, it does. So now we can plant. Mealwood seed. Oh, we got two seeds. Copy. They'll plant two of those, those, those two and two of those pots, and then we'll just have to get get more when we can. I should dig my way over here, then I guess up here. You one two three four. It's there. There. I think I'll just dig across here. These are all halted due to oh, illumination. Oh yeah, bristle blossoms need illumination. And then we can dig those two up. And that'll give us that other oxygen source over there with that oxalite. Well, I know a good chunk of this episode was spent kind of giving an overview and discussion and whatnot. But I think, uh, and so I went a little long, but I think this is a good place to stop. It's the middle of the night. We've got a little bit of a base started here. And uh, hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to keep moving and get, uh, and get some more stuff built. So thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.